In this lecture presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to cover absolute maximum and minimum, relative maximum and minimum, Rowley's theorem, and mean value theorem. So we got a lot. Uh, let's start off with different definitions about maximums and minimums. And this may seem like mathematical quibbling, but in the next chapter we're going to be doing applied maximum and minimum problems, so it's important. That's going to be very similar to how we learned implicit differentiation to go on to learn uh, to do related rates. This stuff we're covering here, we're going to use, so pay attention. Uh, if we take a look at the first problem, we got something along the line of a parabola. It's going to be increasing from to, as it goes to negative infinity and to positive infinity, and we have a minimum point on it. So we can say that this has an absolute maximum uh, and that the maximum is an extremum. So this is an absolute extremum, or an absolute minimum from negative infinity to positive infinity. And for the same reason on problem B here, we're going to have an absolute max. But we're not going to have an absolute minimum. Problem C is a case where we get absolute maximums and minimums from negative infinity to infinity. And then problem D here, we don't have a maximum or a minimum anywhere from negative infinity to positive infinity. But we're not restricted to just defining things at from negative infinity to infinity. We can define things from A to B. And here we just have the equation f of x equals x. And while there is no extremum on this interval, we do have a minimum and we do have an absolute maximum, and they occur at the interval. And graph F here shows us where we have a minimum occurring at the interval, but we have a maximum that doesn't occur at the interval. So this is a maximum extremum, and this is just a minimum. Now the last example we're going to take on in this absolute maximum and minimum business is the example of this equation, which is on the order of, say, like f of x equals x to the third minus 6x squared plus 4x. Not drawn to scale or anything particular. We have a maximum and we have a minimum in this function, but notice that they're not absolute on negative infinity to positive infinity because the graph goes to positive infinity and goes to negative infinity. These are called relative maximums. And a relative minimum. And the last thing worth pointing out here is that if you cut the interval, instead of doing this from negative infinity to positive infinity, then these would be absolute maximums and these would be absolute minimums. So pay attention to the borders and that kind of stuff because, again, that's going to become important when we start doing applications of this. Now this all takes us to Rowley's theorem. Rowley's theorem states that if a function f of x exists and its derivative f prime of x exists on an interval from a to b and the endpoints f of a equal f of b equals 0, then there must be one extremum on the interval from a to b. Well, what does that all mean? Let's take a point a, and let's take another point b. And we know that f of a equals 0, and that f of b equals 0, and we know that this function is differentiable on this interval, so it cannot be a straight line from a to b because the derivative of z of 0 is 0, so it doesn't make any sense. So we have a function, it must exist between a and b, and it cannot be a straight line, which means it must have some type of curve to it. So, for example, it could be like a downward facing parabola, it could be x to the third. It can be any combination of weird things, except not that. But you have to have some type of interval function on this interval that's not a straight line. And if you have that, and you know that the point, it's going to cross the x-axis at a and b, then you must have at least one maximum or minimum on these. 
And you can see graphically that this is in fact the case. You do have these maximums and minimums and there's no way you can construct a function that doesn't do this because you've already ruled out your only possibility which is a straight line from A to B. And if you can't have the straight line, it's got to have some type of curve. It can't do anything special beyond that. And this is going to bring us to our next thing called the mean value theorem. Our mean value theorem states that if we have a function and its derivative exists on an interval from A to B, then there must be at least one point on that interval, which we'll call C, where the first derivative at C is equal to f of B minus f of A over A to B. Again, this is one of these things best explained by just drawing it out, so let's do that. Let's draw our interval, say this is A and this is B. Do some dashed lines here. And let's draw any arbitrary function in here on this interval. This is f of B and this is f of A. So now we take a look at what this part of the mean value theorem here, it says f of b minus f of a over a minus b. Or I suppose in the way I've drawn this, it's probably more appropriate to say this is b minus a. What this is, is this is the change in y values divided by the change in x values. So this is the average slope on this. So you draw the straight line here, and that's the slope over the course of this entire graph. And now what the mean value theorem says that you have to have at least one point on this graph where the slope is absolutely the same as the slope over the whole interval. And this is one of these things that it just has to be that way. Take a look at this little point here down C. We got the slope here is exactly the same as the change over the whole interval. And what's different between this and the mean value theorem is that if you have your interval a to b and it's a straight line over the course of it, you already meet the condition because every single point in this interval, its slope is the same as the slope over the whole interval. So you've absolutely guaranteed at this point that you are going to have, uh, that you're going to meet the mean value theorem. And I encourage you to just draw several things in your book or your note paper take an interval, draw any function in this interval, and then connect the two different points there, draw the slope between the two points, and try to find at least one point where the slope is exactly the same. It absolutely has to be that way. And what you might be noticing now at this point is that the mean Raleigh's theorem is just a specialization of mean value theorem. And in fact, it is. The only difference between Raleigh's theorem and mean value theorem is if you actually go and plug this in, f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Well, we already know that f of b and f of a are both equal to zero in Raleigh's theorem. So that means you have zero over some number, so this is all equal to zero. And what do you have when you have the first derivative is equal to zero? You have a maximum or a minimum. So Raleigh's theorem is really just the specialization of the mean value theorem. And we'll do plenty of practice problems on this to make sure you guys get the hang of it.